Yes. Oh, that's good. So we have already, I've already put it there. So today, Sam me just says me. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Then I we start discussing the lesson of today. For those who have just joined, you can easily call me teacher Daniel Alera. I teach with Edify Uganda, and uh, this program is sponsored by Edify. They are doing some good work for us with support from ITAO, that is ICT Teachers Association of Uganda, under an umbrella, and the umbrella is called Christian School Owners Association of Uganda. We thank God for them. We pray that God gives them more years of blessings as they live to serve his people. Today, we are going to see particle theory of matter. Particle theory of matter. That's what we are going to discuss now. Before we get into that, let's see briefly Arrangement of particles of matter. Good. Uh, uh, the lesson is, is going to be ours, so we are the ones to talk, we are the ones to suggest each and everything. I see Waswa Agatha with the hands up. Waswa Agatha. Waswa, can you unmute? Yes, Waswa Agatha. Can you unmute? Uh, excuse me, I had forgotten to lower my arm. Okay, please. But are you able to see on my screen? Okay, good. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's see arrangement of particles of matter. Now, when talking about particles of matter, we have seen matter can, matter can exist in three mean four states. That is solid, liquid, gases, and plasma, as we discussed in the previous lesson. Today, we are going to see the arrangement of those particles of matter. I'm going to display for you a diagram here. Let's study this diagram very well. Study the diagrams very well. Hope you can see on my screen. There's solid, there's liquid, and gases, that's how they are arranged. And there are questions which are going to come after. Please, let's study. I'm giving you more, like more two seconds to study the figure. Good. The two seconds are done. We have seen those. Then the activity is, from the diagram which you have observed just above, can we discuss the arrangement of particles in solids, liquids, and gases? Good. So you raise up your hand. You'll discuss for us solid. You can even tell us your name. You discuss for us solid. You raise your hand. You discuss for us liquids, and you discuss for us gases. The arrangement, just like all you have seen in this, in this diagram, in this figure. The way you see them in that figure, what I want you to discuss for us here. Okay, raise up the hand. I see 12 hands up. Oh my God. Let me pick the first person. The first person is called 
miles. Yes, miles. Hello, miles. Hello, miles. Okay, miles is not talking. Let uh, me go to the arrangement of the arrangement. Miles? Oh, Miles has a problem with this network. Let me pick Martha. The arrangement of particles in. Um, the particles in solid state are packed. Martha, you are discussing for us particles in solid state, eh? Yes. Yes, start. How, how are they? Particles in solid state are packed together. Are packed. And they are packed together. Move. Uh huh. And they do not move. And they do not move. Yeah. Oh, good. Particles in solid state are packed together and do not what? Do not yeah. move. Is that the only thing you know about particles in solid state? Let's first discuss about solid state only before we go to other things. Solid state. She has told us that particles in solid state are packed together. They do not move. Let me pick another hand to add for us something on solid state. Uh, Mazi immaculate. Particles of solids have a distant arrangement. They have distant arrangement. Distant arrangement. We are noticing them down. Distant arrangement. Is there another thing you want to add on that? No. Okay. Let me go to, to Patronella. Patronella? Patronella. Okay, let me go to William. William. They William, have you have the same answer. Okay, now let us go to liquid. Let's talk about liquid. William, can you talk about the liquid? Okay, Sadiq. Sadiq. Sadiq, unmute. Yes, Master. Unmute. Master. Yes, please. Master. Hello. Master. Master. Yes. The particles, yes. In, the particles in liquid state are yes. very. They are fairly packed. Yes. Oh, that's good. Fairly packed. Uh huh. Is there another thing? No. Yes. Okay. Somebody says yes. Please go on. What is that? Teacher, the particles in liquid states are close together with no distant, distinct arrangement. Particles can move and slide around each other. Oh, very good, wonderful. They can move and slide around each other. They are, they are spaces, they are space. They can move around. Is that okay? Yes. Oh, that's very great. Can somebody talk about gases? Let me pick Deborah. Deborah? Gases can move around and they cannot occupy a specific shape. They can move around, they cannot occupy a specific shape. They cannot occupy a specific shape. They can move around. Uh huh. What about the distance between them? 
Aha, uh -huh. let me see Ingenitius, Baguma. Baguma, Ingenitius? Yes. Particles yeah. in gas. Particles in gas, they are too scattered. They are too scattered. Good, good, good. They are too scattered, and so the space between them is bigger. Good. Now, uh -huh. which other one do you have? Particles move and collide with each other. They move and collide with each other. Great. Hey. You people have matter, really, you know? And they say that you have matter, that means that you have a lot of things in the head. Let me see Elijah. Elijah? Elijah, can you unmute? Elijah? Elijah? Unmute. Molecules in gases, they have the lowest intermolecular force. Molecules in gases, they have, we can use the word, the weakest, okay? They have the weakest mm. intermolecular force of attraction between them. Them. Oh, oh that is so good then. <laughs> very, very good. Okay, let's go ahead and we harmonize now. Uh, let's harmonize that. Well, all what you have spoken, we can see this. We are starting with the particle in solid. We have already discussed. And uh, we are saying that the particles in solid are fixed in one position. Two, they are very close to each other. Then three, the forces between these particles are strong, stronger than the rest. Amanya says they do not have definite shape. Good Amanya. Tricia says they do not have, Ayebare says particles far from each other in gases. Good Ayebare. Yeah. Oh, you people all have brilliant answers. So they say that the particles in solids are fixed in position, in one position. They are very close to each other. The forces between them are what they are stronger, which is, of course, part of what you people have been giving me. Then number three is that, number four is that the particles can vibrate, but they are not able to move past each other they can vibrate, but they are unable to move past each other. Oh, great. So those are basically the arrangement of particles in what is in solid. What about in liquid? In liquids, the particles in the liquid vibrate and they can move past each other. They are also close to each other, but not as close as in what is solid. In solid, they are close to each other, but here we are saying for liquid, they are also close to each other, but not as close as in what in the solid. In for solid, solid, they are very close to each other, but here they are also close, but not as in liquid. What about the force of attraction between them? It is strong, but not stronger than that one in what? In, in solid. solid. Is that okay? Yes, teacher. Okay. So when you're talking about arrangement of particles in liquids, uh, you know what to talk about. You need to talk about the force. Is it stronger or weaker? You need to talk about the closeness. Are they close or not? You need to talk about the movement. Are they able to move or not? Good, so you have to talk about those main points only. Good, 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 good. So, because liquids have weaker force of attraction, they are able to flow and they take up the shape of the container 
Uh, as I, as I had somebody saying that, hey, this liquid is rectangular. It is not possible for the liquid to be rectangular. It is not possible. The li liquid will always take the shape of the what? Shape of the container. Vanessa, Vanessa. I saw a hand up was for Vanessa. Emma, is it Goma? Emma? Emma, can yes, you unmute? Teacher. Yes, Emma. Yes, teacher. I see your hands up, brother. What is it? I was asking. Yes, please go ahead and ask the questions. Very good. But do also gases flow because you have said that liquids flow because the forces of attraction between the air molecules are not strong? Yes, gases also do flow. Now, teacher. Yes. What of plasma? Plasma. Now, when you see plasma, okay. Yes. We gave examples of plasma. Do you see recall the examples of plasma? Yes. Which one was that? Fire. Fire. <laughs> oh my God. Another one? Lightning. Lightning. So when you see plasma, it is actually quite different from this. Plasma, they are out bodies, if you remember very well. They are basically hot what? Hot bodies, radiation which are pro produced by hot bodies, okay? Thunder, something of like that, okay? Yes, teacher. Uh, so for, 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 for a state of matter to flow, the force of attraction between them must be very what? Very weak. Otherwise, if they are stronger, they will not flow. Is that okay? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, please. Can we move on? Yes. Good. Let's go to gases. Gases, the particles are far apart. <laughs> they don't want to know about each other. They, they, they don't care. They are far apart. <laughs> teacher, can liquid, teacher, liquids cannot be compressed. Why? Oh, we are going to see that liquids can't be compressed because the space between them you see, for something to be compressed, like, like gases, gases can be compressed because there is, they are far away from each other. So you can push the particles and you bring the particles together. By pushing the particles and bring them together, you are compressing. Do you get me, guys and ladies? Yes, teacher. Okay. So when you see a liquid, I mean, when you see, let's say, like a solid, solid, the particles are already together. So where are you taking them? They cannot be compressed because the particles are already what, eh? closed. Even for liquids, the particles are also what, eh? closed, okay? Though yes, not teacher. very close, but they're already what, eh? closed. And so you are unable to bring them together Close. by compressing. Is that okay? Yes, teacher. Oh, good. I think let... Sasuke, Sasuke, you asked that question. I don't know whether you have, have answered you. You can let me know in the chat still. Sasuke, is it okay now? Liquids can't be compressed because the particles are already close to each other. There are no spaces in between them. Meanwhile, gases can be compressed because the particles are far apart. Okay, good. So we're saying that. Particles in gases are not touching each other. They are not touching each other. And they are long away, long away apart. I have decided to use the word long away. Though I would say far apart. Yes. Sake says, yes, I understand. Good, Sake. They are of tune moving quickly. 
Those are the gases. They move quickly. Because why do they move? Who can give us the reason? Why do they move? Why do they move? Oh, Joseph, Joseph. 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 Okay, let me hear from Angela. Gases have enough room for them to move around. Have enough what? Eh? I don't like things. Enough room for them to move around. Enough room to, like for them to move around. Like, yeah, that's okay. like in so where they are closely packed. Okay, good. Let me hear from Resty. Resty, can you unmute? Hello, Resty. Yes, teacher. How are you today? I'm fine, teacher. Why are gases able to move around? Because they are spaced. They are? They are spaced. Okay. It's because they are spaced. Let me go to the chat. Question says, they are fully spaced. Blessing says, gases have enough space to move. Uh, sorry, around. To move around is okay. Uh, Apple says they are far apart. Teacher, you said solids are particles. Mm -hmm. Teacher, you said in solid particles vibrate but can't move, can't move close to each other. Why? Because the force of attraction between them is stronger. Uh, when I was on Google, that was anxious is saying, when I was in Google, they gave me the answer that some solid can compress. Is it right? Solid like a tennis. A tennis contains <laughs> tennis contains some gas molecules inside my brother anxious. Yes, Google gave you the right example. Tennis contains some what? Some gas molecules inside. And so gases, the fact that gases can be compressed, that means that tennis with the gas inside can as well be compressed, but not the tennis itself. The gas inside are the ones which can be compressed. I'm going to give a general reason why they are able to move around is because the force of attraction between them is weaker. The force is weaker, and so they can move. Not only that one, we also attribute it to the spacing, of course, between them. Oh my God, good. Teacher, the gases are like what? Gases can be like, let's say oxygen, nitrogen, what? Those are gases. Water vapor, those are gases. So if they are squeezed, then they move closer to each other. So those are basically. Eh? Today, we are also going to discuss something which is called to be particle theory of matter. Sometimes it is called kinetic theory of matter. If I may ask, if I may ask the whole class, that class, what do you think? What do you think are the components of matter? What do you think matter is made up of? What do you think is matter made up of? What are the components of matter? You can raise up your hand. I'm going to start from Nyakato. Waswa Nyakato. Waswa Nyakato. 
Water is made up of atoms. Now, yes. Nyakato, yes. when you talk of atoms, somebody like me may not understand. What do you mean exactly? Teacher. Teacher. What are atoms? Atoms are the smallest particles. Of atoms are the smallest unit of matter that can take place in a chemical reaction. Smallest unit of matter that can take part in chemical reaction. Yes. I can say good, very good. So when you're talking about matter being made up of atoms, do you mean that matter is made up of very small particles? Is that what you're trying to mean? Yes. That's what you're meaning, okay? Yes. Can you give us like an example to show that matter is made up of very small particles? <laughs> like yes. water. Like water, like, uh-huh. Talk about it. Uh, water is made of molecules. And, and small, molecules, small water molecules, eh? Yes. Which is okay. which is having hydrogen and oxygen. Which is having nitrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen. Oh, oh good, good, good. Let hydrogen. me pick another person. Let me pick Lumbeze David <laughs> Rubanga Kene. Lubanga Kene. Lubanga Kene. Hello, Lubakene, David. Unmute. Oh, I've lost steam. Yes, Lubakene. Uh, according to me. Yes, I'm talking to you. Uh, I said that molecules. You say that molecules, okay? Yeah. Apoyo matek, okay? Be. Be, be, apoyo, apoyo, mi answer correct. Good. Oh, yeah. Oh. Obama says that molecules, matter is made up of molecules. Let me hear from uh, Ira Guha Lavin. Lavin? What do you think are the components of matter? Loving. Okay. Loving can't hear me. She can't unmute. Let me hear from John. John Anxious. For me, I would like to define an atom. Okay. Please go ahead and define an atom. An atom is the smallest particle of a chemical element. Very good. Reza says that teacher in Google Classroom, there is a point I didn't understand on the range when particles. It is squares, they move closer to, together. What do they mean? Squares is like squeezing it when compressed. Okay, lastly, I'm giving the chance to Melody. Melody? 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 Excuse okay, fine. Me, yes. I thought an atom is the smallest unit of a molecule. An atom is the smallest unit of a molecule? Is it correct? Is the smallest unit of an element. Okay. okay. Yeah, yes. of an element which is electrically neutral and can take part in chemical reaction. <laughs> that is the chemical definition. Atoms are smallest individual, I mean, smallest indivisible. We say indivisible. So they're the smallest particles, they are molecules themselves. Because if I say 100 molecules, that means there are 100 atoms. So they are smallest, actually they're the smallest unit. That's what we call to be an atom. Good, thank you so much. Uh, 
components of matter are Jotham, Jotham, unmute, Jotham. Yes, sir. What are the components of matter? Uh, matter occupies space. Matter occupies space. Matter has weight. Matter has weight. Um, also, sir. Yes. Uh, the kinetic theory of matter states that matter is made up of very tiny particles that are always in a random motion. Very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Matter, the kinetic theory of matter says that matter is made up of small space, which are randomly moving. Good. How can we prove that? How can you prove that? What is matter made of? Okay, let's see. Let's see down here. We're saying matter. This is kinetic theory of matter. Kinetic theory of matter says that matter is made up of small particles which are called molecules. I told you molecules are also the same as the atoms that are in the state of random motion. So matter is made up of small particles or atoms, which are always in stand state of random motion. If you want to say random motion, we say apazad or zigzag motion. But me, I used to say that, no, it is not possible. How can I be made up of small atoms only? A person like me, remember we gave examples of matter. How can a building be made up of small particles? How can a tree be made up of small particles? A big tree like that. It is very hard. Can somebody explain to us, how is it possible for a human being, okay, let's say a building to be made up of small particles? How? You raise up your hand and you tell me. Raise up the hand and you tell me. Yes, Matthew. Matthew and Mark. Matthew uh, and Mark. There are different types. There are different types of molecules. There are different types of molecules. Yes. Okay, let me hear from Julia. 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 Yes, teacher. Uh-huh. How can a building be made up of molecules? Can you confirm that to us? Uh, the, the components of a building are mm. bricks. So the bricks are the ones that have the the particles of matter. Soil particles, eh? Yes. Julia? Yes? They do have soil particles, okay? Yes. Oh, that's great. Let me hear from another person. Gabriel. Gabriel? Uh, yes, Gabriel. Molecules are many, and they, when they forge together, they form matter. When they are brought together, they form matter. Okay, good. So this theory says that it says that uh, Rester says I think bricks in bricks I think they are molecules. Yes. Matter is made of small particles. That is angular. Good. So we're saying the speed of motion of these particles is directly proportional to temperature. We shall see this ahead. Now, to show to us that particles, I mean, matter is actually made up of small, what, small particles. We use 
Uh, Julia? Yes. Can you read for us that? Read what? What is on after, the screen? After sweeping your classroom. After sweeping your classroom, do you remember that there is always some dust? Yes. Are in those dust matter? Yeah, yes, yes, they are. They are made up of what? Molecules. Molecules, which are very what? Very small, not so. Yes. Have you ever seen a racing car? Have you seen that racing car in that diagram? Yes. You see the dust is producing? Yes. Those are molecules, okay? Yes. I'm going to ask you one question, okay? I'm going to ask you people one question, and the question is right up there on my screen. There are things we experience in our daily life. Okay? There are things which we experience in our daily life which, which also explains that solid, liquids, and gases are made up of small particles, which we cannot see with our naked eyes. What are those? What are those things which we experience in our daily life? And they show to us that actually matter is made up of what? Small particles, but we cannot see them with our naked eyes. Who can give me that? We clip. Yes. We clip. Sorting. Salting. Sorting. Shouting, okay? Okay, good. Shouting. Another person? Sabra. Sabra. Who is Sabra? Smoke. Eh? Smoke. Smoke. Good? Yes. Smoke. Good. Uh huh. Let me hear from Melody. Teacher, can you say germs? Eh? Can you say germs? Germs. The one that causes like a disease, eh? Yes. Yeah, that is also very correct. Let me hear from Babire. Yes. Babire. Let me hear from Tricia. Tricia. What's up, Papa? What's up, Papa? Okay, good. Pius. Pius. Okay, let me go to the chat. Uh, Nam Subuga Agatha says, dust is also an example. Chloe says, virus is an example. Then uh, John Asher says, teacher, excuse me, can you give me the right definition of Brownian motion? We are coming there. Good. So an example I can give you, it's like when you put sugar in, in tea. When you put sugar in tea, you can never see that sugar again after dissolving. But it remains in what? In tea. Do you get that? Yes. Then too, if you are sun drying your clothes, okay? Hello? Do you hear me? Yes. When you are sun drying your clothes, do you see where water goes? I, do you normally see that water which is going? No. no. But it goes away. Do you get that? 
it can be going. The water is going, but it is made up of small particles which we cannot see with our eyes. Then somebody says here, salt in food. Yes, Amanya Tricia says, salt in food, yes. This salt can be much in food, but you can never see it. Yet salt is there. You realize that matter really is made up of small particles that even some of them, our eyes cannot see. Now, 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 to explain that, to explain that, we use what we call to be, there's a guy who did an experiment and he was called Mr. Bronian. Kinetic theory of matter, we already said this, matter is made up of, kinetic theory of matter can be proved using two theories only. We have Bronian's motion and diffusion. Uh -huh. Nyakato says, a balloon full of air. Very good, Nyakato. Now, when you put air in a balloon, do you see that air? You can never see it. But it will make balloon to swell. Meaning that there's something, but we can't see with our naked eyes. The smallest indivisible part of the element. So with those examples, we can easily okay. confirm we can easily confirm that matter is made up of small particles. Now, to prove that, we use what we call to be Brownian motion. Uh, Brownian motion came after a scientist who was called Robert Brown. Robert Brown did his experiment and he found out that really matter is consisting of small particles. Let us start with the Brownian motion. I request you to watch this video. Let us watch this video as we wind up on Brownian's motion. Watch this video. This video is trying to explain to us Brownian motion. Listen carefully. Yes. Are you able to see on my screen? Yes. Yes, teacher. Good. Yes. Brownian motion. The first evidence that matter consists of tiny particles in motion was given by the English botanist Robert Brown. When Robert Brown was studying the pollen grains suspended in a liquid using a microscope, he discovered that pollen grains were dancing to and fro in a random manner. Similar haphazard motion can also be observed when small colloidal particles suspended in a liquid are examined under a powerful microscope. The zigzag motion <coughs> an equal bombardment between the suspended particles and the molecules of the surrounding medium. This irregular motion of suspended particles is referred to as Brownian motion. We shall now study movements of large and small particles suspended in liquids. Let us first look at an isolated large particle A suspended in a solution. A number of molecules hit particle A from all sides. On an average, the impact mutually cancels out. So the resultant force on the particle is zero. Now observe the particle B, which is very small. Particle B is hit by less number of molecules, moreover, it is not hit equally from all sides. Due to this, there is a resultant force. This resultant force alters the direction of particle B. When particle B moves, the direction of the resultant force also changes, resulting in a 
Now understand Brownian motion with the help of an experiment. Fill a hollow glass cube with small particles. Place it under a low power microscope. Simultaneously illuminate the cube with a light source. We observe that the smoke particles appear as bright particles moving in all possible directions in contrast to the black background. This is an experimental evidence of molecular motion or Brownian motion. So that is Brownian motion. Hope you watch the video. Yes. Uh, teacher, the audio is not clear. Air pollution. Okay. Okay. So Brownian motion is we are going to define it here. So we are saying that it is just a constant random or up as that movement of tiny particles in a fluid. That is what we call to be Brownian motion. So in this experiment, uh, got smoke particles, smoke particles were put in the gas smoke cell. So these smoke particles were put in a smoke cell and light was directed onto it. Then using the powerful microscope, the smoke in the smoke cell was seen to move in opposite direction, in opposite way, in random motion. They were seen to move in different direction. So from there, he made a conclusion that actually particles, I mean matter, is made up of small particles which are moving in random motion. So that motion is what we call to be the Brownian motion. So Brownian motion is the constant random haphazard movement of tiny particles in a fluid. So this experiment, smoke is placed in a glass cell and the glass cell illuminated with light from one side. The smoke particles are then observed from above using a microscope. Then from there, it was observed that white specks, white specks of smoke particles was seen moving in constant random motion. What brings about constant random motion? Because there are already gas molecules or air molecules which were colliding with that. So we say that it shows that particles of matter are ever in state of constant random motion. Explanation for that. The constant random motion is due to an uneven collision of invisible air molecules with visible smoke particles. That is briefly what we call to be Brownian motion. Jonathan? Jonas? 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 I see your hands up, Jonas. Joseph, 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 hello, Joseph. Okay. Let me see some hands up. Uh, Lavi, you have not talked today. Lavi? 
the meaning of bombardment okay. the meaning of bombardment is the knocking okay knocking yeah. colliding okay yeah okay please okay. so that is an experiment let me hear from winnie mugabe winnie mugabe Winnie Mugabe. You are going to. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. So that is that when it comes to our lesson for today. Now, those who do not know where the work is, let, let me show you where the work is as we wind up the lesson you go to google classroom you go to classroom on your phone hope you can see on my screen can you see on my screen yes good so you come here you come to google classroom here then when you go there you see classes your class is senior one it is here. Then after that, you go to classwork, senior one. Then you scroll down. Uh, you scroll down to physics. Physics is here. This is lesson two. Lesson two is here. So you go here. Then you open it. It is this one. This is what you have just talked about. It is just what you have talked about now. Now, so you copy the work back in our book, and that will be the end. Then there are those who are asking for the WhatsApp group. If you want to join WhatsApp group, go to Google. You see my Google. Then you type here, and a, I mean Christian School Owners Association. Christian, 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 Paul, Honors, Honors, Association, Association. Then you enter, then you enter, it will bring for you this. So when open that, you see something like this. A motto is there. Okay. Then you go to home. home. Then you go to join the class. It is here. Join class. class. When you join class, it brings for you this. This is our timetable, the one we are using now. It is there. It is online. Then we have the Google Classroom classes. They're all there. Then if you want to join WhatsApp group, WhatsApp group, you come here, you see, join P1, join baby class. Then you go to join senior one. You say join senior one E class. You just tap on it. It will take you direct to the, to the to our WhatsApp group. Then the link is just right here. You copy and you send it. You go there. Thanks, teacher. Thank you, too. Thank you, teacher, for the lesson and knowledge. May God bless my new teacher. Bye. Goodbye, Nyakato. Thank you so much. I thank, thank you, you for being part of this. Goodbye for now. Have a nice lunch. Have, Have a nice lunch. Have okay, teacher. Okay, please. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.